singing loud and hard to build your voice is vocal death. If you're a singer who's trying to build a powerful voice by singing or practicing loud and hard, you need to watch this. Hi, I'm Chuck Gilmore, international vocal coach and founder of Power to Sing and the Second Nature Singing System. You want to have a powerful singing voice, right? The problem is too many singers think they build their voices the same way you build your biceps, through long, hard workouts with heavy weights. I used to believe that, too. It seems logical. The more weight you can lift, the stronger the muscle, or in this case, the louder and harder you practice singing, the stronger and more powerful your vocal cords and your singing voice become. But it isn't true. Martial arts master Bruce Lee is a perfect example. He discovered heavy weights made his body big, but he couldn't function. He had no agility. From the website, work out like Bruce Lee, the link is in the description, it's reported, quote, Bruce wasn't happy with the functionality of the additional muscle mass. Not much attention is paid to the connective tissues like ligament and tendon strength. Well, Bruce's thing was, let's build up the connectors and we won't worry so much about the size of the muscle. Again, Bruce was about function, unquote. That's from Jesse Glover, Bruce Lee's first U.S. martial arts student. Bruce Lee trimmed down the bulky muscle and lost 35 pounds, yet he became much stronger. In like manner, your singing voice is not developed to its full potential by pushing it to its limit. Loud and heavy vocalizing builds extrinsic muscles surrounding your cords. That extra tension squeezes the vocal cords, making it impossible for them to vibrate freely and easily. Famous singer Steven Tyler has had multiple surgeries on his vocal cords. Why? Singing loud and hard with the outer neck muscles, squeezing the vocal cords. British singer Adele has had two vocal hemorrhages and surgeries on her vocal cords. Why? Loud and hard singing. There are many other examples of loud and hard, sing hard singers who've suffered vocal injury and vocal death whose singing career ended early. This is why I said singing loud and hard to build your voice is vocal death. There is a better way to build vocal power. Seth Riggs, vocal coach of the stars for 40 years, said in his book, Singing for the Stars, quote, most singers use excessive muscular effort when they sing. Whenever you use your outer muscles to control your voice in any way, you prevent the free vibration of your vocal cords inside your larynx. The result is a labored and unbalanced sound. You must first eliminate any out the muscle activity that interferes with your tone. If you try to sing too loudly too soon, your outer muscles will never give up their pulling and tightening reflexes. The ability to increase the loudness of your tone will come by itself after the coordination of your vocal muscles has been established. Coordination and strength are, all, are most easily developed by doing special exercises." Unquote. How do you develop a strong and powerful voice without suffering vocal death or injury? Here are three steps. Step number one, do special exercises to eliminate tension from the extrinsic neck muscles. You want to do exercises that change the bad habits you've developed over the years. For example, I used to pull chest voice and raise my larynx too high. Ah. By just learning to do one special exercise, I could sing from chest to head voice without straining. I'll show you this in just a moment. In order to know which exercises will help you the most, take a simple vocal test and discover your vocal type. I've developed a simple but effective test, which you can get right here in this information card or in the description below this video. Step number two, after taking the vocal test and discovering your vocal type, get the exercises for your vocal type. These exercises are designed to eliminate tension caused by the outer muscles, which are not part of making pitch, but that interferes with the free vibration of your vocal cords. For example, if your vocal type is pull chest high larynx, 
you want to get the exercises for that vocal type because they'll help you reverse bad habits and retrain your nervous system so you can sing without the outer muscle squeezing your larynx. Now watch this video, I'm gonna try and get it pictured right there to learn more about the four vocal types. See if you can tell which one seems more like your voice. I'll put it on the end screen so you can click on it easily. Step number three, practice the exercises 15 to 30 minutes a day, five to six days a week. You don't have to do the exercises loud and hard. It's best to do them at medium volume and as demonstrated. I'm going to show you the exercise I mentioned. If you do them loud and hard, among other things, you'll reinforce bad habits instead of building balance and coordination of the vocal cords. This frees your vocal cords to develop unencumbered power. I'm asked almost daily how a singer corrects specific problems in their voices, like how to sing higher or stronger without any breaks or flips, or with a more consistent mix or stronger mix in head voice. Next to private lessons, doing designer exercises for your vocal type is the best and fastest way. And designer exercises is a vitally important element of pillar number one in the second nature singing system. Many of you have already begun using the fast track vocal type exercises, part of pillar one. Let me know of your successes in the comment section. I remember where I was when I first did this exercise that got me into my head voice without straining or breaking. I was traveling in my car, practicing with a cassette tape. Anybody know what those are? <laughs> I was on an overpass near my home, getting ready to enter the freeway. Very quietly, with a little cry or pout in my voice, I sang. <clears throat> Now I'm going to get it to where it would have been in my head voice. I know that may not seem like much to you, but to me it was a miracle. I'd never come close to doing that with a connected tone without straining or breaking. Suddenly at age 43, I did something that I thought was impossible for me to do with my voice. Similar things are going to happen to you too. Now please also be sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so you are notified when I publish a new video. And you can also find good stuff at Power to Sing on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Singing loud and hard to build vocal strength puts you on the sure road to vocal injury and vocal death. Even though surgery on vocal cords has improved over the years, there's no such thing as routine surgery on anything, and certainly not on vocal cords. The best surgeons sometimes get poor outcomes on the best singers. Think Julie Andrews. It's far better to train the voice to be powerful and strong with special exercises designed for your vocal type. This will preserve the health of your vocal cords throughout your lifetime while you're building and thriving in your singing career. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and share it with a fellow singer. I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing. For you, singing can be second nature.